Hey, this is Kai Uwe Brolik from Ambition. I'm standing in front of the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart under Türkheim, Germany. Here is where you can have a look at the history of Mercedes-Benz going all the way back to the first ever automobile, the Benz Patent Motorwagen. We sure have come a long way since then. What you can't see in the museum yet, however, is what we're working on at Ambition, the next generation infotainment for Mercedes-Benz passenger vehicles. As a 100% subsidiary of Mercedes-Benz AG based in Berlin, with just over 400 people from more than 40 nations, we're part of Daimler's MBOS strategy and are developing Ambient, a reusable platform for automotive in-vehicle infotainment. A key ingredient of Ambient is free and open source software. Whenever we're faced with a challenge, we want to ask ourselves, can Wayland do it? Can Pipewire do it? Or a catchphrase you're all familiar with, is there a framework for that? In fact, cars these days are pretty much computers on wheels. What drives the gorgeous MBUX hyperscreen in the all-new electric Mercedes EQS isn't too far from a regular desktop Linux. We have systemd units to bring the system up, we use Qt, QML, C++ for the UI, just like KDE does. And just like a Linux distribution, we want our products to be software-driven, not hardware-driven, and get the latest and greatest software to customers on whichever car line is unveiled next or even retrofitted to cars on the road through over-the-air updates for many years to come. We're proud to sponsor Academy again this year and recently we actually switched our default desktop choice for our Linux developer machines to KDE Plasma. This is not only because of our close proximity to the KDE community, but also as an incentive for us to improve the user experience for ourselves and everyone else. We're looking forward to using more frameworks and pieces of Plasma in the infotainment system and if you want to learn more about what we're up to and how you can become a part of all of this, be sure to visit the Ambition Office Hours during Academy. Thanks for having us this year, it's a pleasure. Hey, Albert here. You probably already know me since I've been in KDE for a long time, but I'm here to speak about KDAB. KDAB is one of this year's Academy sponsors. Let me tell you a bit about it. At KDAB, we do cute C++ and 3D. We can help you at any stage of the project. So it's be it design or planning or coding or training. So we're pretty good trainers and you can see that we're starting to put some of our trainings in YouTube. So please go there and subscribe. We also do very interesting tools like Gamma Ray. It's amazing. It will give you all kinds of insights for your application. So go check it out if you haven't. As like almost everybody we are hiring now. So that's the URL you can use to apply. You can also obviously talk to me via IRC or Matrix. At KDAP, there's lots of people with KD background. So you will feel at home. Uh, we ha do work from home. We also have some offices around the world. We're very happy to be sponsoring Academy 2021. We hope you're enjoying it. Now, let me tell you about this event we're planning. We are planning a conference for Qt developers with the nice name of Qt Developer Con. It will be happening live in Berlin at the end of September. That's all from me. Please remember KDAB when you have needs for Qt, C++, or 3D experts. Enjoy the conference. Hello, my name is Tuukka, I'm from Qt. Very nice to be giving a sponsor's talk in the KDE Academy 2021 event. Also a very big thank you for accepting us to co-locate the Qt Contributor Summit uh, together with the Academy event. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we'll be using the same systems as this event uh, provided by KDE to have the Contributor Summit, to which I hope many of the KDE members will also join together with the other Qt contributors to develop uh, what is the directions for Qt framework beyond uh, the Qt 6.2 that we are currently working on. This is a very exciting year for Qt, as of course many other years, um, but now we are having uh, Qt 6, uh, getting much more add-on modules with Qt 6.1 and 6.2, making it possible for KDE and many others uh, to fully migrate on top of Qt 6. So I hope also that during this event, there will be a lot of good discussions and, and dialogues how uh, we can together bring 
the KDE frameworks and applications on top of Qt6 and uh, this way allowing all the users to benefit on all the great things that, that the new Qt version has to offer. So, without further ado, thank you very much and let's have a great event. Bye-bye! Hi everybody and welcome to the GitLab at Academy 2021 Sponsor Talk. This year we're thrilled to be a Platinum Sponsor at Academy. For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Nuritzi Sanchez and I am the Senior Open Source Program Manager at GitLab. That means that I work with communities like KDE and advocate on their behalf to help make GitLab a better place for open source communities and projects to thrive. Today I'm going to be talking about a few different things, um, but first I'll start off with an intro to GitLab. I'll talk about how we can all make greater contribution impact, and I'll mention how you can join us. Let's get started with a quick introduction to GitLab. GitLab is a single platform for the entire team. This means that everybody can use GitLab instead of having different tools for different stages, you can consolidate and just have a single platform. At GitLab, we've identified stages like manage, plan, create, verify, package, secure, release, configure, and defend. Those are a whole lot of stages and a whole lot of people need to be involved in deploying great quality enterprise software. So instead of needing to have a single tool for everything and thus making it really difficult also for contributors, having to learn new tools, new systems, et cetera, and having to maintain all of those tools, you can just use GitLab to make your life simple and make it easier for newcomers to join. We believe that GitLab's all-in-one DevOps platform enables greater visibility because everyone can see the work. That in turn leads to greater collaboration because everyone can contribute. That leads to more velocity because everyone can deliver more predictable results faster. And all of that combined leads, to, leads projects to be able to iterate faster and innovate together. And at GitLab, we're all about contributing together. In fact, it's GitLab's mission to change all creative work from read only to read write so that everyone can contribute. We believe that when everyone can contribute, consumers become contributors and we greatly increase the rate of human progress. All right, so I've gone over what GitLab is and what it stands for. So let's talk about how we can all make greater contribution impact. And in order to do that, we need to talk about the term upstreaming. Because um, now I know a lot of you are familiar with the term because KDE is a popular upstream for many projects and it also contributes upstream to other projects. But in this case, GitLab is the upstream version of the KDE instance that you all are using to contribute to KDE. So that means that as you're contributing to KDE, if you're having difficulty using the GitLab instance or just have an idea for how to make it better, you can contribute upstream so that it's easier for everybody that's using GitLab to benefit from the work that you do to solve that. And there are different contributions that you can make upstream. The first that I'll talk about is code contributions. And that not only reduces the need to maintain the downstream KDE instance, but as I mentioned before, the work that you do to customize the KDE version or whatever it is can also benefit many other projects. In case you're interested, GitLab is mainly based on Ruby on Rails and Go but you can jump in and contribute with lots of other skills, or with other knowledge of other programming languages. So things like JavaScript, Vue, Haml, HTML, Shell, CSS, and Kubernetes. 
we have a contribution guide that shows you which program languages correspond to which projects. So it makes it easy to jump right in, regardless of the programming language that you feel more comfortable, most comfortable contributing in. We also highly value non-code contributions. And I want to emphasize that you do not need to be a developer to contribute upstream to GitLab. A comment, an issue, a merge request, these are all ways of contributing. And that means that even submitting an idea is a contribution. So whether you're a designer or you're into marketing, docs, translations, whatever it is, there is a way for you to get involved and to make a big difference. And our contribution guide, again, shows specific ways that you can uh, contribute to GitLab in a non-engineering way. At GitLab, because we're an open core company that maintains GitLab, the open source project, we've adopted the open source mentality throughout the entire company. That means that GitLab works alongside our community to deliver GitLab. We've created um, handbook pages that outline and detail which stages there are and which team members are specifically working on those stages. So here on this screenshot on the right, I show the project management group, and you can see the product manager, the engineering team, the support team, the docs team, the design team, everybody who's involved in making that stage. That makes it easier for you to tag those team members on GitLab issues or in merge requests and have discussions or um, work alongside those team members to help your, get your contributions in or to you know, find out more about contributing in those areas. And that cuts out the middle person who may be advocating on your behalf because you're able to discuss directly with the people who have the most relevant technical expertise. But if you need some extra help, feel free to tag either myself at Narizzi or my open source support liaison, Greg Myers, he's at Greg, uh, to help. And hopefully our usernames are simple enough to remember. Let's see. All right, so now I'm going to briefly go over how you can join us. And the first way is by joining the GitLab for Open Source program. Now, I know that KDE is already using GitLab. They're actually using the Community Edition, which is our completely open source version. But if you find yourself um, at another community or with one of your own personal projects needing to use our top tiers, top tier features, or if you need some extra CI minutes, we offer 50,000 CI minutes per month for free through this program. So it's a great way to um, get some extra perks. So feel free to um, apply. And if you need help navigating it, uh, message me because this is the program that I run. I also want to mention the GitLab Beyond Code event series. This event series came from an idea that, the, that some women in the Women GitLab team member resource group had, where they were expressing interest in speaking at more community events, but also uh, expressed the, the fact that they are not engineers and that a lot of our uh, conferences and events and everything tend to be very engineering focused. So we wanted to combine kind of two goals one, allow these women um, who didn't have another place to really, you know, fit um, in our events to be able to speak at our events, and then also to really showcase how GitLab can be used for things beyond code. So when you attend these events, you'll hear from people in finance, accounting, legal, marketing, design, community operations, a whole bunch of different teams that use GitLab in their day-to-day -day work, and you'll hear hacks, tricks, just see the different ways that GitLab can be used to manage all of those workflows. So it's a great event series to attend, especially if you're not yet using GitLab for things beyond engineering activities and want to get some ideas for how to get involved, maybe how to get buy-in from those teams as well. We also have our annual user conference coming up August 3rd to 4th. That's GitLab Commit. 
and Katie will be having a presence there. So I hope to see a lot of y'all's beautiful faces there as well. If you're not quite sure how to get started or, you know, you're a little shy or just want to experience how the contribution workflow works, uh, a quarterly hackathon is a great event to try out because there are merge request coaches there to help you. And there are some pretty cool swag giveaways that we do as well. So it's kind of a win-win-win situation. Uh, I will say that the one that we had this quarter just happened earlier this month. So the next one will be next quarter. We would love to hear from you. So please get in touch. We have a user forum, a community forum. That's forum.gitlab.com. And this is where if you have technical troubleshooting needs or just want to get to know some more of the community members or GitLab team, um, this is a great place to, to go and start chatting. There are product managers, support engineers, and lots of other GitLab team members there, um, and they can help you out. All right, I'm near an end, and so I would just like to say that we will be hosting GitLab office hours at Academy. So join us on Thursday, June 24th, between 1400 and 1500 UTC. I will be there as well as Greg, my open source support liaison, and hopefully some other GitLab team members. And we would love to meet you and get to know you better. With that, I'll end. Thank you very much for attending this talk, and I will see you around Academy. Hi, I'm Grayson, the host and producer of the Fedora Podcast. With me today are Rex Dieter and Neil Gompa of the KDE SIG. Hi, y'all. Hey. Hi. Today, we're going to talk about Fedora and KDE. My first question for you guys is, what is the Fedora Project? I can feel that one. Um, I'd say Fedora is a great uh, community of folks that uh, helps create some innovative, uh, notably free and open source platforms. Uh, that's open-ended, but the primary target is uh, Linux distribution. What is Fedora KDE? Uh, first and foremost, it's uh, Fedora Special Interest Group. It's a group of like-minded individuals that like to work on KDE. And the primary product of our work is a spin that users can use to install Fedora and KDE Plasma on their computers. How is Fedora KDE involved in Upstream KDE? I'll field that one because it's a, it's a fun question and I like this one. Um, so a, a lot of what we do in Fedora KDE is take the Upstream software and integrate it into Fedora itself. So we provide, we package up the KDE technologies and ship it as part of our spin, as Rex mentioned earlier. And we use the experience that we gain from doing that work to provide valuable feedback to the KDE community to help improve their software and their processes and make a better experience for everyone. We don't wanna keep this to ourselves. We don't wanna make like some kind of secret sauce, whatever. We're, we wanna work with the upstream to help make the KDE community successful with the help of the Fedora community as well. What is it that makes Fedora a great choice to use KDE? A great question. And um, I'm gonna borrow some words of a, a nice fellow that joined our group recently. Uh, he shared uh, some good bullet points here. Notably, uh, Fedora produces high quality packaging and that uh, Fedora's package management is well done. Uh, Fedora is great at uh, adopting uh, new technologies. Uh, Fedora also uh, makes some good choices for default, cho uh, default settings and uh, some pre-installed software that our users can use. And most importantly, uh, we have a group of responsive and friendly developers.
That's super important. What's coming up next for KDE and Fedora? All right, so I'm taking this one. This one's fun. Uh, so as some of y'all may already know, uh, with Fedora Linux 34, we lo- we switched uh, the KDE desktop in Fedora, KDE Plasma desktop, to Plasma Wayland. And so now we offer the Wayland session by default, and we did a lot of work with the KDE community during that bring up time over the past uh, year to make that a reality. It was fantastic. We went back and forth with like various bugs and, and user experience niggles, and we, we came out with a solid experience in the end. And we want to take that further. We want to refine that because, you know, the work is never done. And, you know, that was a big change that we made for Fedora Linux 34. And so for Fedora Linux 35 and further, we want to keep improving on that. We want to iterate and make that better. But we're not exactly stopping there. We have another thing coming. So launching with Fedora Linux 35 is Fedora Kinoi or Fedora Kinoite. Uh, This is a new desktop spin produced by the KDE SIG that uses RPM OS tree, which is a technology that comes from the Fedora core OS group uh, to build a, a reliable, immutable desktop platform using KDE technologies built on Fedora. We've done a bunch of work with the KDE community to develop the first bits of integration around that in Plasma Discover, and that shipped with Plasma 5.22. We're going to start using that, integrate that, and provide further feedback, refinement, and hope to ship an awesome desktop experience uh, in Fedora Linux 35. How can people get Fedora KDE? Yeah, so this is really easy. It's just single plate, kde.fedoraproject.org. I know, shocking. You go there, you'll see a lovely splash uh, with a screenshot of our desktop environment. Then you've got a big button to download it. From there, you can find the standard 64-bit x86 PC ISO to download and install on your regular uh, x86 PCs. But also, you'll find links uh, for 64-bit ARM, otherwise known as either ARM V8 or, as people in the Fedora community often call it, ARCH64. Or you'll find 32-bit ARM, otherwise known as ARM V7, variants of it for single board computers and ARM-based laptops, such as the uh, Raspberry Pi and the Pinebook Pro, respectively. So if you want to try it on all the different things, it's easy. Just go to kd.fedoraproject.org and go check it out. How can people talk to the SIG, get involved, and contribute? So this is so easy. We now have a matrix room where we can all talk really easily. So if you want to come and reach out to us and talk to us, give us real-time feedback or, you know, kind of figure out how to get started, you can reach out to us at poundfedora-kde colon matrix.org. That's our matrix room. Now soon we'll be launching our own Fedora matrix server and the room name will change. But if you're in there, it'll, it'll be available. And when the room name changes, you'll be coming along right along for the ride. Uh, and the old name, I expect will still work. Um, but if real-time chat's not your bag and you prefer to, you know, asynchronous email-based communication, we've got that too. You can go to, you can sign up for our mailing list at kde at list.fedoraproject.org. There you can, you know, chat with us and uh, give us feedback and and even like ask about how to help. And we can, you know, walk you through like how to, you know, be part of the SIG and contribute to how we produce an excellent experience using KDE technologies. Now, we also have, for those of you who like that high bandwidth real-time communication with video calls and such, we have video SIG meetings every week. The notice is sent to the KDE mailing list. So if you subscribe, the Fedora KDE mailing list. So if you subscribe to the Fedora KDE mailing list, you'll know ahead of time when it's coming. So you can you can prepare, come and join and talk to us. So yeah, three great ways. Hope y'all, somebody come by, come and talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. you know, we're uh, really glad to be here at Academy and to be talking with our really good KDE friends. Yeah, and we're totally stoked that we're sponsoring Academy this year. And we're looking forward to seeing the great things that are coming out of, out of the KDE community at Academy. And hopefully you'll get to see a little bit about what we're doing at Academy as well. And Tell us what you think.
Thank y'all.